patents. <clears throat> so patents are part of how we induce companies to make those really um, heavy upfront investments in developing a new drug. So what a patent does is create a legal monopoly, um, which hence creates the space for them to draw monopoly profits. So in practice, only the top 30% of drugs pay for themselves. So how strong should patents be? Um, it's definitely a balancing act because this if the patent is too weak, then you're not going to get enough people to invest in innovating new drugs. But if the patent protection is too strong, then there's less barrier. There's like is creating barriers to further innovation when other companies are able to utilize that drug um, as a base point and then build on it for to make further innovations. Um, they can't do that until after the patent is completed. Otherwise, they would be um, they would they don't really own the rights to that chemical compound. So there is a balancing act in patent strength between, on the one hand, making sure that you protect them from, from and like making sure you protect the incentive to innovate, and on the other hand, allowing further innovation, which you would prevent if the patents are too strong. In developing countries. Um, they don't have to play the exact same balancing act uh, because, or really in any other country, there is like this free rider effect. So essentially, if other countries have a monopoly and they are innovating in new drugs, then like you can provide really cheap um, pharmaceuticals for your population without affecting whether the other country is going to be innovating or not. So like within one market, like within the United States, for example, you have to create monopolies to, you know, protect these pharmaceutical companies. But the fact that another country isn't um, paying those high prices doesn't necessarily change that company's um, innovation. They still have like some reason to innovate because they have the legal protection, at least in the more developed countries. It's the same thing with price discrimination. Um, so drug companies, I mean, so one of the impediments to having price discrimination, so price discrimination happens when um, different countries negotiate different rates of payment for a particular drug. So like you might have heard that, you know, you can buy insulin in Canada for like 10% of the price that you buy it in the United States. Um, and it's because they... Per, they have like more government involvement and so they're negotiating lower prices for their drugs as a country. Um, and so drug companies do that. To some degree, people in the United States are able to go to Canada or go to Mexico and purchase a lot cheaper drugs. Um, and especially in like the European Union where countries are so close to each other and it's so easy and there's so much um, interconnectedness between different nations within the European Union that it would be really hard to like price discriminate between those countries. Um, but in the US, like some people do go to Canada, but at the same time, we do pay higher drug prices than in other countries. So price controls that's when we don't really have that so much in the United States, especially with respect to pharmaceuticals. But what it is, is when the government negotiates a price of a drug with the drug company directly. So the Italian government publishes a list of maximum prices for each drug. So no insurance company is allowed to spend any more than this amount of money. Um, the NHS does that in the UK. Um, the, the German government does it as well. So most European countries have that. Um, there, are these, there are controls in place to reduce the incentive for research. So <laughs> there is um, there's going to be a trade-off anyway between access to the existing drugs and the incentives to develop new drugs. So it's similar to the patent trade-off. The patent um, raises the price of drugs, which helps fund innovation. Um, and price controls lower the price of drugs, which could Im impose a barrier to innovation. The US really has no price controls, even though it does have monopoly uh, protection patents that raise prices. We don't really have any government negotiated price reducing controls on the cost of pharmaceuticals. So drug companies kind of count on making their money off of US consumers.